To realize that the nation has made a lot of investment in your training. Likewise, the nation is expecting the best from you. President Muhammad Buhari Abjaji reiterates commitment to addressing security challenges. APC representatives in crucial meeting with party hierarchy as information minister reassures party supporters in Quara determining the reasons for the loss of 21 billion dollars inquire what appropriate steps are not taken promptly and how of representatives investigates 21 billion dollar oil revenue loss Good evening and thank you for joining us on NTA Network News. I'm Elizabeth Stover. President Muhammadu Buhari has restated the irrevocable commitment of his administration towards addressing Nigeria's fundamental challenges for sustainable peace and prosperity. Speaking at the graduation ceremony of Senior Course 40 of the Armed Forces Command and Staff College, Jaji, the president, however, insists that the change Nigeria desires is a collective responsibility. State House correspondent Adam Musambu reports. 182 participants drawn from the Nigerian Army, Air Force and the Navy, as well as international officers from various African countries graduated at the ceremony. I, Air Vice Marshal Lord Shitu Alao, the Commandant, Armed Forces Commander and Staff College Judge in Nigeria, do hereby confirm Staff President Muhammad Buhari, attending for the first time since coming to power, congratulated the graduates for their accomplishments, describing them as future leaders of the nation's armed forces. Let me call on the graduating officers to realize that the nation has made a lot of investment in your training. Likewise, the nation is expecting the best from you in terms of commitment to your duties and fatherland. Go out there and make your honest contributions. He commended the Nigerian Armed Forces for appropriately responding to the various challenges of security confronting Nigeria, especially the Boko Haram insurgency, militancy, kidnapping, as well as activities of separatists and armed militia. The Armed Forces, he also said, contributed immensely towards stabilizing the West African sub-region, as well as promoting world peace, citing Liberia, Sierra Leone, the Gambia, Mali, and Sudan as some of the countries where Nigeria is highly appreciated. It therefore goes without saying that a force that is extensively committed to the maintenance of local, national, regional, and world peace needs to be adequately prepared to confront security challenges as they emerge. That is what is expected of an institution like this. The president used the forum to raise the commitment of the federal government towards stabilizing the country for efficient management, repositioning the economy, and fighting corruption. In Nigeria, there is a tendency to lay the blame for the state of affairs in the country on the doorsteps of the leaders alone. Yes, leaders have a major role to play in providing direction and the enabling environment. However, the citizens' role also is vital in our attaining meaningful transformation of any society. May I assure you of this administration's effort to return our country on the path of peace and prosperity. The Commandant Armed Forces Command and Staff College Jaji Air Vice Marshal Lawachitu Alao had earlier assured the President that 
products of the college can be relied upon for value addition to their various services in the discharge of their mandates. In view of the asymmetric nature of the contemporary security challenges in the country, the college recently reviewed the senior course curriculum to emphasize counter-terrorism and counter-insurgency packages. During the ceremony, 20 students who distinguished themselves were presented awards. Squadron leader Frederick Oyenuti emerged the overall best graduate of the college, recording the highest grades ever in the last 20 years. For his achievements, squadron leader Oyenusi was not only given a lot of land, but also conferred with an honorary citizenship of Kaduna State by Governor Nasr Ahmed Rufai. From Kaduna, Adamu Sambo, NTA News. Still on security, the 208 Quick Response Group of the Nigerian Air Force has arrested 16 suspected bandits while participating in the ongoing Operation Sharon Daji. A statement by the Director of Public Relations and Information, Air Vice Marshal Olato Kumbuka Disonya, indicates that the outgoing unit commander, Group Captain Caleb Olaira, made this known while receiving the Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Fadik Abubakar, who was on an operational visit to the NAF unit in Gusau, Zomfara State. The Air Chief commended the bravery and gallantry of the personnel of the 207 quick response group for their efforts in restoring peace to Zamfara State, adding that additional air assets would be deployed. Despite the limitation of air projection and air power caused by bad weather, Air Marshal Abubakar reiterated the force's commitment to continue to do its best within safety standards, urging the, Niger urging the, urging the Nigerians to provide credible intelligence that will assist in combating insurgency in the country. The Nigeria Police Force says Senate President Bukola Saraki was earlier Thursday interrogated by its team investigating the case of the bank robbery which occurred in Ofakwara State on the 5th of April 2018. A statement signed by the Force Public Relations Officer Jimo Moshud says Senator Saraki made cautionary statement to the investigation team. The statement says the investigation is still in progress. Meanwhile, a statement from the office of the Senate President, Bukola Saraki, has confirmed his meeting with a team of investigators on the offer robbery case in his office. This is sequel to his invitation by the police and his written response on why he could not honor the police invitation. Senate President used the opportunity to stress that he has no connection with the offer robbery incident or any other criminal case. The influx of illegal immigrants into Cross River State, occasioned by the crisis in southern Cameroon, has become worrisome due to the security challenges it poses to the state. Rising from a security meeting held at the government house Calabar, Governor Ben Ayade called on the federal government to assist in addressing the situation which is currently threatening the peace of the state. Udwak Etin has details. Apart from the humanitarian effort in addressing the increasing needs of the refugees camping in Cross River State, the crisis in southern Cameroon has exposed the state to daunting security challenges. Governor Ayade hinted that Calabar in recent has become an illegal trading route for immigrants through which contraband has smuggled into the states. The war going on in Cameroon, it has a direct impact on cross river state. So federal government needs to come in very urgently and save us from this generational crisis that we are having at hand. The Nigerian Navy has however remained on top of its game with the regular arrest of smuggled goods and suspects along the waterways. This is the fourth time I'm handing over um, seized rice coming from Cameroon. And I want to emphasize that we are not going to relent in our effort in ensuring that any small good item through our waters that will sabotage the efforts of the federal government, Nigerian Navy, will not sit down and watch it. 
As part of its security strategies, the state government said contracts for revitalization and expansion of street lighting network has been awarded. In Calabar, Uduak Etham, NTA News. On the political scene now, members of the APC caucus in the Senate have reassured President Muhammad Buhari of their unflinching support, loyalty, cooperation and understanding in his journey in efforts at uniting, stabilizing, and transforming Nigeria for posterity. Senate leader Ahmed Lawal stated this while speaking to journalists after leading the group on a solidarity visit to the Nigerian leader. State House correspondent Adam Musambo reports. It was a warm and friendly atmosphere at the presidential villa as President Buhari freely interacted with the APC family members in the Senate barely 24 hours after 14 senators defected from the governing party. At a meeting attended by the national chairman of the party, Adam Zoshomole, and the secretary to the government of the federation, Boz Gida Mustafa, the senators brought the Nigerian leader up to speed on recent developments in the National Assembly, reassuring him that in spite of the defection by some members to the opposition parties, APC is still in the majority with 53 senators to PDP's 48. But let me also say that even from yesterday, less than 24 hours into the defections, we had discussions with some of our colleagues who defected. And they have shown their willingness and interest and readiness to retrace their steps. Going forward, therefore, we believe that this family will soon get back all its members. Even the PDP uh, senators, there are some that have shown their readiness to come into the APC fold. The APC senators promised to give President Muhammad Buhari every support that he requires to succeed in the implementation of the Change Nigeria project. We have resolved, like we did before, to continue to support our president and our administration to ensure that we fulfill all our campaign promises to Nigerians. And by the grace of God, this administration will end as a very successful one. So far, we have done so much with so little in terms of giving development and infrastructure across the country. 2019 will be a year that this administration will be given a renewal by Nigerians, and the National Assembly will witness a higher majority of the APC in both houses by the grace of God, and of course, across the states, we'll have more states. During the meeting, Senator Olarewaju Tejo Show from Ogun State, who was among those reported to have defected, announced his return to the governing party. <laughs> Senator Sheh Ustani from Kaduna State, widely believed to have been on his way out of the party, told newsmen that he remains an APC member as issues that led to the situation of revolt are being addressed. I am here because I believe in the leadership of the party. I believe also in the leadership of President Muhammad Buhari. Now, I'm also of the belief that there is no issues that we cannot solve as human beings, as men of conscience and conviction. So I believe that the discussions we had here uh, is reassuring and in every possible way is soothing and comforting. APC National Chairman Adam Zoshomole, who addressed the senators alongside President Muhammad Buhari at the closed-door meeting, described those that have left the party as victims of disinformation. Which is why a senator from Ugu has already returned to the fold. And I'm sure more and more who left out of confusion and who were misled, I believe they will come back. But more importantly is that we have agreed that going forward, this party cannot be intimidated. The government will not be intimidated. We will not be distracted. We remain focused. We remain committed to addressing those critical challenges that confront our country, namely security, economy, and fighting corruption. On all three, the president is consistent, is determined, and the senators have come to reassure the president of their full backing in pursuance of these three core commitments which we made to the Nigeria people. And for me, as chairman, we are very excited. Mr. Oshomale confirmed that no APC senator was promised any return ticket by the party. 
From the State House, Adam Usambo, DA News. In the meantime, the Senior Special Assistant to the President on National Assembly Matters, Senator Ita Ng, says what 14 senators did during Tuesday's plenary was not defection but notification for defection. While briefing National Assembly correspondents on the issue, the former senator says some of the senators have reversed their decision. And a lot of these senators, by virtue of their procedure, mm -hmm. have not yet fully and effectually defected, but have expressed intention to defect by way by the procedure. All the reverses expressed by the distinguished senators and all members, none is attributed or directed at President Muhammad Buhari, nor his actions or any action or commission or omission of the president or the federal government. In fact, in my interaction, pre and post expression of intent to defect by the distinguished senators and members, all the dramatist personnel, the distinguished senators, and all members express their solidarity and support for Mr. President and express categorically that their grievances and consequent actions are not directed against President Buhari nor his re-election in 2019. Some of the distinguished senators who expressed defection to other parties or intent, intended defection have returned to the fold of the APC. They were with Mr. President and those who were not there, because the notices were short, some of them could not return, and most of them will still be joining or further interactions within the weekend with the leadership of the party. Senator Ita Inang, however, urged the National Assembly to create time within the recess to attend to some pressing issues before them. We will be praying the legislature, the leadership, the membership, to consider that there, were, there are many matters of very urgent nature which are pending before the legislature, and unless considered the functioning of certain institutions in the, of the government will be hampered. If you recall, a lot of the funding for the 2018 budget is was budgeted to come from some external sources. The request for approval of this to raise funds from these external sources is before the legislature. And unless considered, it may hamper the level of implementation. Meanwhile, Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed has thanked all Progressives Congress members, supporters and stakeholders from other parties in Kwara State for their unflinching commitment, support and solidarity since the play out at the National Assembly on Tuesday. The minister in a statement notes that there has been overwhelming expression of love and support for President Muhammad Buhari from across Kwara State in the wake of defections by federal legislators from the state. Lai Mohammed says that the national leadership of the APC is consulting and will come up with a program of action that will take into consideration the recent developments. He therefore calls on party members and supporters to maintain to remain calm as decisions from the consultations will be in their best interest. And parliamentary support group at the House of Representatives has restated its resolve to stick to the ideologies of the All Progressives Congress, APC, and President Muhammad Buhari in delivering good governance to citizens. National Assembly correspondent Lami Ali reports that the group restated this position at a briefing. The Parliamentary Support Group is an association of lawmakers of like minds from across political parties and various federal constituencies of Nigeria who believe in the commitments of President Muhammad Buhari to move the country forward in all sectors of the economy. The group, led by its chairman, Representative Musa Sarki Adar, said 
The National Assembly in the executive arms of government are working closely to evolve more development strategies that would benefit all segments of Nigerians. We will to committee to the ideas of Mr. President in particular and APC in general because of our belief and commitment to move this country forward from where it has been left unattended to by the previous government. To get governance down to the people. And that is strengthened by our resolve to support uh, Mr. President and also create a platform where we can engage him to give him the true picture of realities on ground. Speaking on the preparations and party success in the 2019 general elections, the group is emphatic on supporting President Muhammad Buhari for his second term in office. We will continue to stand with the president. We will continue to support him. We will continue to support his policies in the House of uh, Representatives. We are in full support of President Muhammad Buhari, all his good doings. We are giving him the best of our support. And the good thing about this group is it's not meant for APC alone. The executive and legislature, the group says, have enhanced synergy towards improvements in general performance in governance. From the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NCA News. In a similar vein, the All Progressives Congress, APC, is urging members to beef up the strength of the party in government for further success. This is against the backdrop of recent developments in the party's membership, especially in the National Assembly. Political correspondent Salio Abdullahi reports. The issue of defection which occupies center stage in Nigeria's political circle Tuesday this week has prompted this visit. To have a family in a major engagement between APC leaders and its members in the House of Representatives, the legislators pledged loyalty to the supremacy of the party and its vision to promote progressive politics in Nigeria. At the end of a close-up meeting, some of the legislators addressed the media. I think what the National Party, uh, Chairman assured uh, that there's going to be fairness, justice, and equity. And then we came basically to assure the leadership of the party that come rain, come shine, we are with the party and we are ready to work for the success of the party. The party leadership pledged to support all party members within the confines of democratic ideals as everyone is expected to contribute mass value for general success of the party. In Abuja, Salihu Abdullahi, NTA News. You're watching NTA Network News. Time to take a break to bring you some messages. We'll be back with more reports. Stay with us. African Kings. African stars, African heroes, African greatness, African legends. In Africa, our heroes are our legends. Daniel Amokachi, Samika Ford. Raji Jaidi and El Haj Jew. Mustafa Haji. Is that Mustafa Haji? It is. And Haji Dior. And in the ball downfield. There you go, Haji. Legends never leave the game.
Experience the legendary game with Glow Data Unmatched. Glow, Grandmasters of Data. Since 1999, communities in Bollori 1, Bollori 2, and London Chiki were regarded as highly marginalized in terms of developmental projects. Roads like these were what obtained all around Bollori and London Chiki. Now, these communities are witnessing continued changes. Roads and drainages have been constructed to connect dozens of streets in Bollori and London Chiki. This important intervention not only eases socio-economic mobility for residents, but also prevents diseases through the improvement of environmental conditions. This is another legacy of Governor Kashim Shetima. It's a celebration of love as the families of Dr. and Mrs. Bala Shekari and architect and Mrs. Darius Dixon Ishaku, Executive Governor Taraba State, cordially invite the good people of Taraba State to the wedding solemnization of their children, Dokas Bala Shekari and David Gimbuya Ishaku on 28 July 2018, time 11 a.m. prompt. Venue CRCN1, Dorua Jalingo. Reception follows immediately at at Jolly Inyame Stadium, Jalingo. God bless you as you come. These days, people get their news and information from more media sources than ever before. Some of the news and information given are fake, unverified, doctored, and manufactured to create confusion, stare disaffection, and cause disunity. Before you believe or share any news, ask yourself, is this real? Is it from a credible source? Is it verified or verifiable? Fake news is dangerous. Whether you do it for fun or for political gains, real people can get hurt. Fake news. Don't create it. Don't spread it. This is a public service announcement from NTA. Do you know? that the Nigerian police now operates in the best international practices of policing? Do you know that the Nigerian police has been restructured to be more accountable and responsive to all your security challenges? Now, what the police demand from you is your trust, your collaborative efforts by providing necessary information about criminals and their activities in your neighborhood. Be vigilant to achieve our creed as we promise. We shall police the country based on international core values of policing with integrity. We shall ensure that rule of law prevails in our actions and activities. We shall respect diversity, display courage, show compassion, and demonstrate professionalism. We shall operate within the principle of democratic policing. We shall shun corruption and and we shall make Nigeria safer and secured under the leadership of IGP Ibrahim Otum Idris. Let the wind of change blowing across the country chase away crime for the benefit of our society. Yes, the Nigerian police says this change must come with peace and tranquility. This message was brought to you by the Public Relations Department of the Nigerian Police Force. Thank you for staying with us. The House of Representatives at Hook Committee. Investigate.
Citing the loss of $21 billion oil revenue has requested the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources to provide it with detailed financial transactions between the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, and international oil companies, IOCs. National Assembly correspondent Lami Ali reports that Chairman of the Committee, Representative Daniel Reyenejo, says the information will enable the committee get to the source of the revenue loss. The committee was set up following resolutions reached at plenary in January and July 2018 that the House should investigate the operations for possible review of the deep offshore and inland basin production sharing contracts between NNPC and IOCs under which the loss was allegedly recorded. Towards determining the reasons for the loss of $21 billion, inquire why appropriate steps were not taken promptly and over an inordinate long period to remedy the situation which led to the loss and possible recovery of revenue lost. Representative Rainey Ju said the committee is also to find out why huge debts are being owed local oil companies by the IOCs over long periods as well as scrutinize the procedure of acquiring marginal oil fields. The authorities concerned are to submit necessary documents by 17th August 2018 from the National Assembly. Lami Ali, NCA News. Guests on NTA's current affairs program, Moment for Thought, are advocating concerted efforts to complement government in tackling the challenges of security with the farmers' herders clashes. This, they say, is achievable, especially with a recent project sharing the green grass. The language of peace is direct engagement. The language of peace is give and take. We are not arbitrators, we are mediators. We listen to the herder and say, you are right. We listen to the farmer and say, you are right. Okay, now, how can we forget this blaming narrative? The program comes up tonight at half past 11 on the network service of the NTA. The National Union of Road Transport Workers has commended the Nigerian Television Authority's commitment to national cohesion and factual reportage in building a vibrant nation. The recognition came when the union paid a courtesy call on the management of NTA in Abuja. Emmanuel Aimiro has details. The leadership of the National Union of Road Transport Workers seeking partnership with the Nigerian Television Authority in promoting One United Nigeria says the 40th anniversary celebration of NTA last year reminds Nigerians of unity of purpose and love with the arrays of personalities the authority showcased during the celebration which should be emulated. The NURTW therefore wants to use the occasion of the union's 40th anniversary to promote peace among members. We are coming, as I've said, to come and celebrate the 40th anniversary. Let us remain in peace. Election period is coming to use this occasion to make sure that this country remains one. NTA's Director General Malam Yakubu Ibu Mohammed says it is a good thing the union is supporting peace agenda among their members that will bring about the desired change for growth. Everybody in Nigeria must be dogged. Everybody in Nigeria must give total support to the efforts of Mr. President to move this country forward. And NTA and the National Union of, Nigeria, of Road Transport Workers are not, you know, are not an exception. We must be there all the way until we reach the promised land. The NURTW anniversary comes up next week. Emmanuel Ayemiro, NTA News. This is NTA Network News. Lagos is our first port of call tonight as we join Dotsun for developments in that zone. Over to you, Dotsun. Good evening, Elizabeth, and a warm welcome to Lagos. Vice President Professor Yemio Shibaju says the federal government is working on modalities towards ensuring that the other six seaports across the country become operational to ease the incident gridlock at the Apapa Wharf Road. He stated this at a dialogue session with stakeholders on the Apapa 
and also gave assurance of the approval for the rehabilitation of the Oshodi Apapa Expressway within two weeks. Michael Olaleye reports. So the issue really is uh, how come these empties are not entering into the port? The structure of the port, as it is now, can no longer accommodate the volume of the activities to activity. Stakeholders within their Papa business corridor expressing their frustrations. The challenges are enormous, but this dialogue with all the agencies at their Papa axis focus on proffering immediate and long-term solutions to the traffic gridlock. The Minister of Transportation, Rotimia Michi, and Managing Director of the Nigerian Port Authority, Adizabala Usman, stressed the need to assess the terms for the consensioning of the port and ensure that shipping companies operate a functional holding bay. I'm waiting for the report as approved by Cabinet. I'll go back to Cabinet to see whether we need to reduce the issue of the, con the con concession. As a government, we need to define and understand the policy of intermodal transportation system across the board for all port locations. Governor Kimi who called for extension of tank farms to border towns, expressed worry that its six tank farms operate within Lagos State alone. Beyond border towns, we will now ensure that our pipelines are working. Vice President Oshimbajo said the federal government acknowledges the indispensability of a proper wealth to the economic survival of the country, promising that transport system will be annexed as direct solution to reducing congestion at a papa. This, he added, will be done with the rehabilitation of existing ports to be functional and exploring the potentiality in the rail and water transport system. The reasons why these other ports were not in frequent use was because of the security situation around those ports, Wari, Portakot, on Calabar and all of that. We should be able to use those ports more frequently. And that will, of course, be congest, uh, the, will be congest the Apapa and uh, Kinkan uh, port. The forum unanimously agreed that if the suggestions and recommendations are promptly implemented, traffic gridlock at the Apapa axis will soon be a thing of the past. In Lagos, Michael Olaleye, NT News. Request for the development of a blue economy in Nigeria was the focus as experts in the maritime industry observe the 2018 African Day of the Seas and Oceans in Lagos. Correspondent Paul Omukago reports that they were also concerned about the ongoing pollution of the seas. Recognizing the importance of the seas and the oceans to the African economy, stakeholders agreed that there was a collective responsibility for addressing the factors hindering the development of the economy. NEMASA Director General Dr. Dakuku Peterside says government is committed to tackling piracy, climate change, and the protection of critical infrastructure. He however asked stakeholders to partner the government to address illegal fishing as well as dumping of plastic and toxic waste in the seas and oceans. We are optimistic that if the blue economy is visited in, in, in an integrated manner, it has capacity to contribute so much to the GDP of this country. Africa cannot talk of sustainable development unless the issues of oceans, governance and securities are tackled. Presenters of two papers at the event, Margaret Orakusi and Dr. Chris Asoluka, we're optimistic that people with requisite capacity can fast track the emergence of blue economy. We are relying on ecosystem. You solve problems in a sustainable way by involving all. The theme of this year's celebration is partnership, key to sustainable blue world. An all-inclusive approach has been suggested by stakeholders in the 2018 Africa Day of the Seas and Oceans. In Lagos, Paul Omukago. News. In line with its brand's positioning as Nigeria's leading mobile internet service provider and as part of efforts to provide customer satisfaction, Airtel Nigeria is offering a new package for its subscribers. Airtel says the new offer will empower more Nigerians, improve productivity and help more telecoms consumers stay connected with their friends and loved ones. Under this new arrangement, the acting chief commercial officer, Airtel Nigeria, Dinesh Bao Singh, said new Airtel customers will benefit 100% bonus on any data bundle purchased. Eight times the value of any recharge, get 100 
credit in main account, 250 bonus on voice, 250 bonus for data, and 3 gigabyte data bundle purchased will get 6 gigabyte instantly within the validity period of one month. Etel reiterated its total commitment to creating innovative products and services that will enrich the lives of their customers as well as enable them to succeed. We pause at this point for some messages. NTA Network News returns shortly. Do stay with us. The reason that Africa is called the new frontier. Portland's potential is now an opportunity ready to be seized. Once revered for our resources, today's wealth lies in our people. People who build the cities that shape the future. People who know an idea in one place means business in another. A generation who technology means there are no borders, no boundaries. We are the new lions in a brave new world. Kings of the urban jungle. And there's a bank that puts the world in our pocket and the future. Organization of Nigeria, SON, brings a new lease of life to Nigerian SMEs. SON has put a greater premium on developing standards aimed at improving the exports of the nation's food and cash crops. These explains why we have developed more standards for Nigeria's produce like sesame, cocoa, curry, and more, courtesy our accredited state of the art laboratories. In keeping with the federal government's aim of doing business, SON has simplified its processes and turned for sun cap and man cap to reduce substandard products and legal arm to prosecute offenses. Join the Standards Organization of Nigeria in raiding our nation of substandard goods due to consistent market surveillance and raids. See something, say something. The Standards Organization of Nigeria improving life through standards. Revolution today. No other rice that tastes like Nigeria rice. Are you sorry? That's not the Nigeria rice we are talking about. Chocolate made in Nigeria rice. Healthy food. I'm going to bring Mrs. Mobu to come to chocolate rice made in Nigeria here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and see yeah. how it are made. Correct, correct. Now they are cooking. Correct. <laughs> Homegrown rice are good for your health. It are boost our economy and are give employment to our people. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. Thank you for staying with us on NTA Network News. Federal government to enhance free trade zones just as the equities market again closes on a positive note. Details of this and more with Chukunonso Wabweze on Business News. Hello and thanks for joining us. In a bid to make Nigeria a manufacturing hub for West Africa and diversifying the economy from its dependence on oil, the federal government through the Nigeria Industrial and Competitiveness Adversary Council is set to address concerns raised by free trade zones operators over inability to effectively compete in the export market. Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Okechuku Enelama, who is also the vice chairman of the council, said 
technical committee comprising representatives from relevant agencies and ministries of government, as well as some selected operators, will be set up to review and recommend appropriate physical and operational changes to the free trade zones to ensure that goods produced in there are competitive in the export markets. And Nigeria has been advised to lead other West African countries in harnessing more than $35 billion in agricultural commodity business in the region. Head of Agriculture Division at ECOWAS, NSRB, on the sidelines of the 2018 African Honey Conference holding in Abuja said, ECOWAS member states are looking up to Nigeria for their socioeconomic growth. Hence, the need for the country to lead in the production and marketing of agricultural produce. All we need to do is to come together as a region, learn from Nigeria, support each other in the ECOWAS region, uh, implement the ECOWAS, uh, the ECOWAS agricultural policy. Meanwhile, the equities market closed today on a positive note with all share index appreciating by 0.22 percent to close at 36,427.22 basis points in 3,595 deals valued more than 2 billion naira. Nestle Nigeria, cement company of northern Nigeria and Nascon Allied Industries topped the Gainers table while International Brewery's PLC shedded 2 naira to lead the losers chart. Financial services sector was the most patronized. That's business news. Network news continues in a moment. I am Chukunonso Mwabeze. Time now to join Chineye Enugu for more reports. Over to you, Chineye. Thank you, Elizabeth, and welcome to Enugu. Treat for members of the Enugu State Executive Council on Revision of Sectoral Policy Trust, the framework for the development of the state economic growth plan has opened in Enugu, declaring the retreat open, Governor Ifan Yugwani charged participants to employ their expertise as key policymakers of the state and find solutions to issues for socioeconomic development of the state. Ijoma Ugweke has the details. Plan serves as a platform for participants drawn from the state executive council, directorates, and agencies to review the policy trust of the state government, develop their respective sectoral plan and strategies. It also creates opportunity for key players to identify priority programs and projects with a view to achieving the best results. Governor Uguan, while happening on the need to redouble efforts to maintain standard, reaffirm the present administration's commitment to reduce poverty by wealth creation. It is my intention to leave the gas that will stand the test of time for which this administration shall be We've already established software that's just the end of it. But there is room for far more. The Economic Advisory Committee Chairman, Professor Obi Orike, and other keynote speakers dwelt on the ethical challenges of governance and bridging the chain of corruption through integrity. The retreat also created opportunity for an interface with participants, the Economic Advisory Committee of the State Government, and representatives of UNICEF, where emphasis was laid on the need to put the competent hands to fast-track development in the state. In Enugu, Ijomu Gweke, NTN News. Anambra State Police Command has paraded suspects involved in various criminal activities, including armed robbery, impersonation, cultism, and internet fraud. Reports that also paraded a 72-year-old blacksmith accused of assisting criminals to repair and service their firearms. Items recovered include locally made single-barreled guns, palm action, and some machines used for the repairs and servicing of guns. Among the suspects paraded by the Anambra State Commissioner of Police, Gaba Babaoma, is a 23-year-old man for allegedly impersonating the Anambra State Governor, Willie Obiano, to defraud unsuspecting members of the public. Others are six-man syndicate set to specialize in intercepting trailer loads of goods, while a 72-year-old blacksmith arrested alongside his three sons is said to be involved in the construction and repairs of machines used by criminals in Uli, here the local government area of a state. A married young girl is also caught for alleged involvement in motorcycle snatching. The commissioner, who said 
The raid of a criminal hideout followed a tip-off, stated that there will be no hiding place for criminals in the state under his watch. We are not relenting, and we will continue to give services, not only to members of public, but in their numbers who live within us and who live with us. Meanwhile, the police have enjoined members of the public to avail them with useful information that will aid their efforts at reading the state of criminals. Inoka Ngozi Okafo, NTA News. And that's our contribution from Enugu. We'll now join Abdullahi in Kaduna for more news from that soon. Abdullahi, it's over to you. Good to see you, Chinenyan. Thanks for joining us in Kaduna. Kaduna State Governor Nasser Ahmed Arafai says plans have been concluded to strengthen the state's reforms in the education sector with a view to giving children of the last privilege the opportunity to acquire decent education. The governor made this known while receiving Kaduna State's contingent who emerged second at the British parliamentary debate format held in Czech Republic. Mohammed Umar Ajigi reports. Eight years old Anas Abubakar, who passed through government secondary school in Gaza, announced student of Ahmad Bello University, Zaria, led the Kaduna State contingent to victory against countries like USA. We are proud Zaria. to tell the governor that we are the first set of students from Nigeria to have won matches that will qualify them to participate in the octo finals of an international debating competition for high school students. Governor Nasur Ahmad Erufai commended the team, emphasizing that the success made by the young boys has gingered the administration to do more in rebranding the education sector. I am very, very happy today to receive you. I've been following your performance in the debates on social media. You've gone outside Nigeria and proved that the quality of our public schools is comparable to anyone in the world. The state government offered one million naira and scholarship for the team to cover their education pursuit. In Kaduna, I am Muhammad Umarajingi, NTA News. Minister of State for Aviation, Hadi Abubakar Siraka, says the federal government is committed to attracting increase in trade and inflow of direct investment in the aviation sector for sustainable economic growth of the nation. The minister was speaking during the 47th Convocation Lecture of Air Force Institute of Technology, Kaduna. Muhammad Umar Ajinge again has details. Of the Air Force Institute of Technology provides manpower training for aerospace and defense engineers. The Minister of State for Aviation and the guest lecturer at the 47th Convocation of the Institute says the Buhari administration remains committed to reviving the image of the country by bringing back to life a national carrier that will make air transportation the preferred and safest means of transportation in the country and above all, a self-sustaining business to drive socio-economic growth. The team that will run this is entirely the business of the investors in the, of this airline. Uh, government will not appoint anybody. That's one. Corporate governance. Two, it will be well capitalized. The minister says the federal government is ready to collaborate with the institute to engage aviation experts and scientists in research that will change the aviation industry for the better. In Kaduna, I am Muhammad Umarajingi, NTA News. Many thanks. And that's our bit. Network news continues with Elizabeth in Abuja. Elizabeth. Thank you. Thank you, Abdullahi. And Spots is next when we return after these messages. Stay with us. Hello. Trust the power of Dettol's one capful for bathing. The power of Dettol's one capful protects from up to 100 illness courses.